This is the Berman Method podcast featuring Dr. Jake Berman and physician assistant Jenny Berman. We are here to treat problems and not symptoms. Disclaimer, this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and not to treat anyone or to give medical advice. If you are interested in any information that we are giving and would like to use this for yourself, we recommend that you contact your primary care physician or reach out to us and ask us questions about yourself specifically. Enjoy. And we're rolling with the Berman Method podcast. Dr. Jake Berman here with my beautiful co-host. Jenny Berman, physician assistant. We are David going against Goliath, trying to help shed light on the corporate medical system, the big pharmaceutical companies, the insurance companies who are choosing profits over patient outcomes time and time again. Fun little fact, or actually you fact check this yourself, the pharmaceutical company generated over a trillion dollars in revenue, trillion with a T, like in Tom, trillion last year, and they don't have anything on the public record that any of that money was spent towards educating people on a healthier lifestyle. Wow. What does a trillion dollars even mean? I think that's it's a, a hundred billion. That's a lot of money. What does even a billion mean? Yeah. Isn't that a hundred million? So a hundred million makes a billion. A hundred billions makes a trillion. And that and was their revenue? That was what they generated in revenue. We don't know the profit margins of that. We can assume that they are ridiculously high when you look at the salaries of these people that they're pulling over from the FDA Back and forth, back and forth. Hey, you worked at the FDA. Come work for us at Pfizer. And then let's go back and forth and back and forth. This is public knowledge that has come out in the past couple of years. So things are coming to light now. And we're trying to shed some light on it where you have choices. You don't have to do what your doctor tells you to do. You don't have to do what your parents or your grandparents thought was the right thing to do because the System has changed. The landscape has changed. So what your parents and grandparents did with their health care should be very different from what we do today. Meaning that when you went to the primary care physician, when you went to your doctor that was your doctor for 20, 30 years and was your family doctor forever, when they told you to do something, you just did it. That thought process is so old school and so outdated You've got to question everything now. Question it. If it doesn't make sense, keep asking more questions until it does make sense. If that person can't give you answers that do make sense, then ask somebody else. Right. We have to recognize that the primary care world has changed over the last 10 years plus with the amount of patients that are having to be seen an hour for the primary care office to be able to sustain, to stay open, to make any money, to make a bit of a profit. They're having to see double and triple the amount of patients that they had to see 10, 15 years ago to be able to maintain that profit margin. So with that being said, now they're seeing double and triple the amount of patients per hour. The amount of time they have on you one-on-one in the office has significantly increased, let alone the amount of time that they're spending researching and figuring out the answers to the questions that you have. Everything is becoming so mainstream to allow them to be able to see more patients more frequently. So we're not looking, well, not, not us particularly, but the primary care world, unfortunately, is not looking for the answers. They're just helping you figure out how to feel comfortable with the symptoms you're having because of that. And this goes outside of the primary care world. This goes into the physical therapy and specialist world as well. But the primary care is the most generic. It's really the insurance world. So it doesn't matter what setting it is, physical therapy, orthopedic surgery, orthopedics, primary care, neurology, uh, rheumatology, it doesn't matter what the field is if it's insurance-based because insurance is the one that is putting the stranglehold on these these, uh, providers where insurance is the one that dictates how much providers get paid. 
and you have to generate X amount of revenue to stay in business. That's business 101. If you don't make more revenue than you have in expenses, you go out of business and you can't just break even. If you break even year after year after year, you eventually go out of business because expenses continue to rise. We're seeing it right now with inflation. So you have to be profitable and you have to have some type of significant profit to make it worth all the extra headaches. So that's when you have to see more and more patients per hour to try to keep the revenue up. It's simple business 101. Right. You're absolutely correct that the insurance is dictating. And I know we've talked about that many, many times on this podcast over and over, but sometimes just hearing things in a different way, it resonates with some people. So yes, the insurance is the primary dictator of what healthcare is able to offer here in the United States at this point. Exactly. So quick recap of last week, because Last week's episode came out and I was actually surprised at how many friends we ran into over the weekend, over the week and the weekend where they sent that episode to their friends and it created a lot of um, conversation. Right. There was a lot of conversation that came up after last week's episode. I remember talking to one of our good friends Friday night. She's like, yeah, I send it to her other mutual friend and she had the world's greatest excuses Mm -hmm. and the vast majority of the excuses are well they don't take insurance right i can afford it sure i can afford it it's not about that it's i have insurance i pay for insurance so i'm gonna use it right Right. And it's so funny that we are stuck with this thought process. You really have to start thinking of health insurance as car insurance. Car insurance does not pay for your oil changes. Car insurance does not pay for you to change your air filter or your fluids in your differential. It doesn't change for you to get new brakes or new tires. Yeah. Right. Like how how many thousands of dollars have we spent on new tires? Because ironically, both of our vehicles needed new tires in the past couple of months. Right. We didn't submit that to our car insurance. Hey, can you help pay this bill for new tires? Right. But yeah, we want to think about that with our body, getting an oil oil change in our body or getting new tires for our body. We want the insurance to be able to pay for it. And you get what you pay for. You're not going to get the quality. You're not going to get the value when insurance is going to be involved. That saying has never been more true in the healthcare industry than right now. You get what you pay for. It is so rare nowadays in America that you can find an in-network provider that is going to give you exactly what you need. Right. Right. And we see that all the time with clients coming to us and we typically will do the blood work in our office and clients want to try to go through their primary care office to get the blood work done. And 99% of the time we don't get the tests that we ask for. And their response to that is, well, insurance isn't going to cover it, so I can't order it. And I'm like, well, that's why we're doing labs in our office in the first place, because I don't have to fight with insurance and we get out of network pricing. So it ultimately comes out cheaper than it would if your lab is run and your insurance decides they're not going to pay for it. But that's a separate issue. The point of that conversation is that we're majority of the time when you go to your provider, you're not going to get what you actually need. You're not going to get what you asked for because they're going to be dictated by what they're allowed to do based on the insurance company. That is so true. And here's the biggest fault or the biggest challenge with all of this is that 99% of America is uneducated in this field. So if you're not in the healthcare field and you have a health issue, you have no idea what's going on. So you have no other choice than to take what they're telling you for truth. Right. You don't know that you should question it. And this is your dad 101 right here where you always get three quotes from everybody sure. because somebody is going to be bullshitting you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like cars, for example. You're a female. You didn't grow up around cars. You didn't grow up turning wrenches, changing tires, changing your own oil. You didn't grow up doing that stuff. So whenever you take your car to the oil change, they always give you a list of things to change. Right. 
And the first thing that you would do is you'd call your dad before we were together. You say, dad, they're asking me to do all this. And he'd say, no. Right. And that's why I would always leave the oil change just, and I would say, just print it out for me. I'll talk with my, you know, talk with my dad about it, or we'll look outside to getting this stuff done. And he, I'd get home and he'd be like, no, <laughs> they're just using you because they, you know, you're a female showing up. They think you're going to do it because you don't know any better. Exactly. So now if you take that and apply it to the healthcare field, what if instead of 1% of patients asking questions and giving pushback, what if 90% of patients started asking questions and giving pushback? Everything would change. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen, and we're not going to go down that road. What The point of this is just ask questions. So last week's episode was a ton of fun. Can I afford it? No, I can't afford to come do business with Berman but I'm going to go buy the brand new iPhone or I'm going to drop two or three or four or five grand on dinners this month alone. Puts things into perspective. This week, what we actually wanted to talk to you about is what could go wrong. So again, we're trying to overcome objections before they occur. We're trying to give you as much information as possible so that you know that we are the right place to do business with, or you know that we're not the right place to do business with. The more information, the better. An educated, informed buyer is the best buyer. So what could go wrong? This is part of the research that we do when we're looking into any purchasing decision we make. What can go wrong? And I think the most obvious is that you don't get the outcome you're expecting with paying to have something done. Exactly. Right? And that goes with any field. I mean, with buying a new car, you don't get the outcome that you expect of buying the new car. With coming to Berman Health and Wellness, you're not getting the outcome. That would be the number one thing that you're afraid of before committing. Yes. Just take back pain, for example. It's the easiest one, the most relatable. If you have back pain, you've got choices. You can either take pain pills, you can get injections, you can have surgery, you can go to a chiropractor, you can get massages week after week after week for years. You can do yoga, you can do stretching, exercising, personal training. You've got all sorts of choice, physical therapy, obviously, all sorts of choices that you can choose to spend your money on, your time on, to help you with back pain. Why would you choose to come to me and spend thousands of dollars to fix your back if you don't know for certain that it's going to help? What could go wrong? You spend all this money and you still have back pain. That would really, really suck. So that I don't know. It's not guaranteed. I don't know that Berman is going to fix my back pain. Can't guarantee it. So I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to try something else. So that's the biggest thing that people struggle with is what could go wrong. Right. And as you mentioned, we can't guarantee the results that we're going to be getting. However, the difference between our practice and another type of insurance and in network type of provider is we will spend the time and the energy figuring out why are we not getting where we want to be visit to visit week to week. So we see our clients, especially in the wellness side, we see our clients every single week. So if we're not making progress. We know we're not doing something right. We know we need to be making adjustments, modifying, doing something different. We need to be researching different things, trying different things. So as long as our clients are compliant and trusting of our recommendations, we are going to figure out the problem and keep pushing to make sure we're doing all we can to get those results. Whereas an in-network provider, you might see them once every two months, if you're lucky, it's probably closer to three months or six months that you're seeing them. A lot of time passes that nothing has been done, no point of contact, no adjustments, no modifications, and you're getting frustrated in that time period. That is the biggest difference right there between in-network and added network. When you go to an in-network physical therapy clinic, 
it is a mill. It's one after another. So if you have back pain, here is the protocol for back pain. And you follow the protocol. You are not an individual. You're just somebody that has back pain. So Bob, you have back pain. Here's the protocol that we're going to take you through, Bob. And hopefully it works. If it doesn't, there's something wrong with you. We'll send you back to the orthopedic surgeon and we'll do more x-rays, MRIs, or injections. Versus you come to us for back pain. If we're not getting something going in the right direction, whether it's pain intensity, pain frequency, or objective improvement, meaning something's getting stronger, more functional, if we're not getting something positive within two to three visits, we're doing something wrong. And I got to figure it out. And I'll do whatever it takes to figure it out. Meaning that after the door is closed and the lights turn off, I'm still thinking about you. I'm thinking, what in the heck is going on with Bob? What am I missing? What is there that's going on with him that is not helping me find out whatever it is that's going to get us to that next step versus the cookie cutters are us. They don't think about you. As soon as the lights turn off, if you're not getting better, okay, call the orthopedic surgeon. We're doing our job. It is that simple. And I can say it because I worked it. I was there. That's the protocol. If they're not getting better, you document it and you refer back to the referring physician. It's that simple. Right. And it doesn't have the studying that goes into it of why are we not making the progress? Where do we need to try something different? So again, the out of network allows the time and the energy to go into the why, the studying, the researching, and the trying of of something different. So coming back to what we, to the objection, so the most common objection of what could go wrong is not getting the outcome that you want. Now, what else could go wrong? What are some of the other objections with what could go wrong? Embarrassment is a big one, meaning that a lot of people are embarrassed that they didn't already make the right decision. A lot of people are embarrassed that they've already spent tons of money, years of time making the wrong decision. And you have to deal with that with your friends and family members because you're talking to your friends and family members about your problem. If you've got knee pain that's limiting your ability to finish a golf swing or play with grandkids or get on the pickleball court, tennis court, you're telling your friends, this is my excuse. This is the reason. Oh, well, what have you been doing to try to fix it? Because everybody has an opinion. It's just like elbows, right? Everybody's got one. So you've been talking about this to friends and family members. So now the next thing is you go and you spend a lot of money, quote unquote, a lot of money. I'm doing air quotes right now with some physical therapist that's at a network when you could have gone to somebody that's in network and you still don't get the relief, you're still not back on the pickleball court, tennis court, golf course, then you're embarrassed. Yeah. And I I think in our field too, this goes along with the embarrassment is the vulnerability of telling your friends that you're working with a specialist on XYZ. So it's not as vulnerable telling somebody you're going to physical therapy for your back or your knee, right? But to tell somebody that you had to go see a doctor because your bowel movements are abnormal or that you wanted to go see someone that specializes in weight loss, like this is a very vulnerable state. And then when it comes down to it, a, a again, in our world is having to go out to a restaurant and make the modifications to your meals when you're ordering or going to a friend's house and letting them know ahead of time that you have these sensitivities and foods that you're trying to avoid, it becomes a vulnerable state. And so you get some people will be like, well, I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to make modifications at restaurants. I'm not going to make modifications when my friends are cooking for me. And it really comes down to, well, how bad do you want it? You know, but that is one of the bigger objections when people first come in is, well, I'm just not going to do that. So I guess this isn't the right fit. Well, you may not just get better. Yeah, it's pretty black and black and white. If you don't want to make the commitment to make a change, then you should not do business with us because we're not in the business of quick fixes temporary fixes. 
we're in the business of really fixing problems. We're not fixing this with duct tape and WD-40. Super glue, right? We're fixing these things with real solutions. And if you don't want to commit to the, the cause, if you will, then you shouldn't spend a dime with us. This is not a quick fix. And I do that. I'm very, very transparent or explicit on the first phone call that I have with people. And I dig and I dig and I dig. I'll spend 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes on our first phone call. And if I can't get a real, true emotional driver to why your back pain is so bad that you're calling me now, and if you just care about pain, then I'll say, don't come here. Do not come do business with us. If your only care is the pain, meaning that your pain is not limiting your ability to play golf, play tennis, play pickleball, play with your grandkids. If your pain is not causing you fear that you're going to lose your independence, you're not being able to maintain your independence, then you shouldn't come do business with me because I'm not in the business of pain relief. I'm in the business of changing your life for the better. I'm in the business of making you more, helping you become more functional at the end of our sessions than at the beginning. I'm in the business of helping you become anti-fragile. That is the biggest thing. If you want to be anti-fragile, come do business with me. If you're just looking for pain relief, go to CVS and get some ibuprofen. Right. Absolutely. So coming back to the vulnerability state of it is just understanding what kind of adjustments you want, you want to make and know that we're going to walk through every step with you through the emotional aspects to make sure that you are getting better and that we are achieving the bottom line goal of helping your fears. Exactly. So that's it. That's all I had for them today, for all the listeners today. Perfect. Well, I think that was pretty deep and again, touches on the most common objection that we get is the fear of not getting the outcome, whether you're not getting the outcome because of a vulnerability fear or a compliance fear or just unsure that your problem can be fixed when you've tried so many other different things. And again, we hear all of this all of the time. We have clients who have gone to four, five, six doctors, including GI doctors and rheumatologists and pain specialists and can't seem to get an answer until we are able to actually spend the time and the effort digging deeper and treating the problems and not just the symptoms. Same goes with you. So even if you have that fear that you're not going to get better, it is worth having that conversation and taking that next step out of network. Love it. Absolutely love it. Avoid the definition of insanity. Do something different. Real quick shout out. We are currently actively hiring downstairs in the PT room and in the golf room. So if you are a personal trainer, a physical therapy assistant, a physical therapist, an athletic trainer, and you're interested in joining the team, or if you know somebody that has the right personality and you think they should join our team, even a stretch therapist, we have a ton of demand right now. We're busting at the seams. So we're looking to bring on two, even three additional providers right here, right now to get us prepared for the upcoming season. Even if you know somebody up north, somebody, somebody that's in the freezing cold northeast, and if they just want to get away for the season, send them our way, refer them our way, tell them to get out of the snow for the season. We're actively hiring, so send them our way. Perfect. Good. It's a great team. Yeah. Like, subscribe, share. Let us know what your questions and comments are, and we'll keep this going. Ciao for now. Thank you for subscribing on your social media and podcast platforms to The Berman Method. Dr. Jake Berman with Berman Physical Therapy and Jenny Berman, Physician Assistant with Berman Health and Wellness. You can find more information on our website, www.bermanpt.com for physical therapy, bermanpt.com forward slash wellness for the health and wellness. You can also find us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and on your 
podcast platform. So be sure to follow us, like us, subscribe to us. And if you would like any further information, definitely visit our website and reach out to us. You may also find our free reports on the websites as well, where you can download this free information for yourself. Have a great day.